Folks, do I have a fantastic one for you tonight because it hones in on what I've been saying that anyone close to old Donnie right now is going to ruin their life and they're going to go dr down the drain with him. And that's exactly what's happening this evening to Trump himself, but also to his pal Jim Jordan, his new endorsed pick for Speaker of the House, because this story is not only more humiliating for Trump than we thought yesterday, but it's more incriminating for both him and Jordan. And Jordan getting endorsed by Trump, while it sounds good in some ways for him, and we'll cover that, it's mostly hurt Jim Jordan and increased the likelihood that both of these men are going to go to prison together as cellmates. Hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. And watch all of this because it exposes how Trump was played in all of this situation, how Jordan may not want the Trump endorsement, and how both of them are screwed legally. Tonight, I have new reporting on how Donald Trump is viewing the race for House Speaker in terms of loyalty to him alone. As he traveled from a New York courtroom back to his Mar-a-Lago club this week, I'm told that Trump was paying very close attention to the dramatic ouster of the man that he often refers to as Mike Heaven. While Trump reveled in the idea of getting the gavel himself, he never really took that suggestion publicly. And instead, I'm told that he focused on making sure that the role is going to someone who is loyal enough to him. He scoffed at the idea of some of these more moderate names that have been floated, like the majority whip Tom Emmer and others. Trump was actually looking to capitalize on the entire chaotic spectacle by going to Washington next week to endorse his pick potentially during that GOP meeting that is set to happen on Tuesday. But that plan hit a brick wall when Congressman Troy Nels tweeted this, catching not only Trump, but his inner circle off guard. He said, quote, just had a great conversation with President Trump about the speaker's race. He is endorsing Jim Jordan, and I believe Congress should listen to the leader of our party. Though Trump had been reluctant to actually do so publicly, at least, that Trump did force him to post his own shortly after midnight, affirming that yes, Jim Jordan does have his endorsement in this race. For now, that trip to DC is scrapped, and so is a scheduled Fox debate between the candidates for the next House Speaker. That fell apart after fellow House Republicans were infuriated that they'd be debating publicly before actually doing so privately within their own party, with one Republican lawmaker telling CNN, quote, People are pissed. It's just another sign of the tension that is happening inside the GOP right now as Republicans are still scrambling to find their new leader. Um, uh, just turning to Jim Jordan for a second here, you know, when you were in Congress, uh, House Speaker, then House Speaker John Boehner, he had to b battle the right wing of his party, too. And at that time, Boehner called Jordan a legislative terrorist. So the idea yeah. now that Jim Jordan is in the running, a competitive running at that for the speakership, that's an interesting turn of events. Yeah, well, not really. Uh, you know, I mean, think about this. Boehner, who became the ultimate figure of establishment, ultimately was a firebrand early on in his career, and that seems to be the, the way that people ascend in D.C. They start as a firebrand, and... Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Next thing you know, they're cutting legislative deals left and right as they climb to the ranks. So I don't know that it's all that unusual. I would say that you know Jim Jordan's probably mellowed a bit, uh, you know, from from when he came into where he is now. Do you, do you raise an I interesting point? Is, I, I think I, that oh, you raise I, an interesting point. This. About, I, I yeah. think the Trump endorsement hurt him because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he already had the firebrand caucus. Now, all of a sudden, you're making, you know, Republican moderates in New York, you know, there are 11 of them, nervous about, oh, my goodness, I got to defend this in my district, that we have a speaker who's been endorsed by Trump, who's not popular in my district. So I, I think it complicates mm -hmm. things, actually, for Jordan, although that's probably not the prevailing you, view, but I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. And very last thing, when you look at what the January 6th report lays out in terms of evidence they gathered. A lot of it based on sworn testimony. I mean, is there a good faith argument to make that Jim Jordan is actually a co-defendant in Donald Trump's January 6th related crimes? All day long, all day, every day. And the only person who knows for sure whether there's enough evidence to charge him is Jack Smith and his team. I'm quite sure they've been investigating the insurrectionists in Congress. Remember, six of them, they're not all still in Congress, asked for pardons because they knew they'd committed crimes on and around January 6th and they wanted to get away 
with those crimes. Jack Smith can't turn a blind eye to all of that. So, you know, the other thing that Jim Jordan has absolutely be, been doing is trying to cover up and prevent Donald Trump from being held accountable for his crimes. In a very real sense, he's been an accessory after the fact to Donald Trump's crimes by creating this Mickey Mouse committee on the weaponization of government. So there, I think there are any number of crimes that Jim Jordan may have committed. And I hope Jack Smith is going scorched earth after those crimes. When last we left the House Republican caucus, they were flirting openly with the idea of anointing Donald Trump as their speaker, as speaker of the House for the entire United States. This is the man, of course, who sicked a mob on that same Capitol building in an attempt to violently topple the duly elected government, a man who has since been indicted on 91 criminal counts, including for those events, across four jurisdictions. They were actively talking about choosing him to lead the United States House of Representatives, to make him second in line to the presidency. That is until about 9.30 last night, when Republican Congressman Troy Nels of Texas announced that he, quote, just had a great conversation with President Trump about the speaker's race, and he is endorsing Jim Jordan, the congressman from Ohio. The ex-president himself followed it up with a middle-of-the-night post, confirming he does indeed think that Jordan will be a great speaker of the House and has his complete and total endorsement. God, that's a long post. Now, to a very small degree, tiny sliver, I'll take what I can get these days. This is something of a relief, honestly, because I think Donald Trump as Speaker of the House would be an awful and dangerous situation. But the potential speakership of Jim Jordan, far-right member of the House Freedom Caucus, a loyal Trump ally, solves absolutely nothing. And in fact, it represents everything that is wrong with the Republican Party. I mean, Jim Jordan is the member of Congress who was arguably most involved in Donald Trump's coup. Earlier this week, January 6th committee vice chairwoman Liz Cheney laid this out for us again in a speech. Jim Jordan knew more about what Donald Trump had planned for January 6th than any other member of the House of Representatives. Jim Jordan was involved, was part of the conspiracy in which Donald Trump was engaged as he attempted to overturn the election. And if the Republicans decide that Jim Jordan should be the Speaker of the House, um, there will, and I, by the way, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he'll lose. But if they were to decide that, there would no longer be any possible way to argue that a group of elected Republicans could be counted on to defend the Constitution. Remember, Liz Cheney and the January 6th committee subpoenaed Jim Jordan. They wanted to know more about what he did know, what he did in the run-up to January 6th, and he just flat out ignored it. So he never got the truth from a man who they believed to be a key witness in the investigation, as Vice Chair Cheney said at the time. I think that uh, Congressman Jordan may well be a material witness. Uh, he's somebody who was uh, involved in a number of meetings in the lead up to uh, what happened on January 6th, uh, involved in planning for January 6th, uh, certainly for the objections that day, as he said publicly. Uh, so he may well be a material witness. Jim Jordan is also one of the Republican lawmakers uh, who returned to the House chamber after they were all escorted out, right, into safe spaces, <laughs> literally. And uh, after the violent sacking of the Capitol, when they came back in, who then voted in favor of Donald Trump's coup. And just five days later, Trump rewarded his loyal foot soldier with the Medal of Freedom. So Jim Jordan is one of the most MAGA devoted members of the caucus the same group of people that produced the very situation we are in now with a destructive, ungovernable Republican majority in the House. In the words of former Speaker John Boehner, he is a political terrorist. You call some of these members political terrorists? Oh, yeah. Jim Jordan, especially. My colleague from Ohio. I, I just never saw a guy who spent more time tearing things apart and never building anything, never putting anything together of Illinois, who both served together on the House January 6th Select Committee. Uh, Congressman Kinzinger, let me start with um, you. Uh, do you share the opinion of Congresswoman Cheney and Cassidy Hutchinson that Jim Jordan uh, is not committed to democracy and the Constitution? 
I absolutely do. I mean, all you have to do is look at his record, look at January 6th and everything leading up to that. Look at, I think you played the soundbite where he says, you know, how, how did, in essence, how did 74 million people not be enough to win an election? So we're going to keep looking until we find something. Well, that's not how the Constitution works. And the thing you need to understand about Jim Jordan is he's a true believer, but he truly believes that the Democrats or the left is an enemy of America, and he will do anything, even extra constitutionally, to defeat them. That's his general belief. I would put him in the camp of Christian nationalists, where he believes he's truly fighting these dark forces, and the Constitution, in some cases, is an impediment uh, to him being able to fight those forces. It's very dangerous for this country, very dangerous for the House, and I'll just say this to my Republican colleagues, really dangerous to the future of the Republican Party, especially if you're the party that still ascribes to Lincoln, Reagan, et cetera. Congresswoman Lofgren, you just heard from Congressman Kinzinger uh, about what his view of what uh, Jim Jordan thinks about the left. That's you. What do, what do, you, what do you think? Yeah. Well, it's not true. I mean, Adam can tell you that our bipartisan January 6th committee worked very professionally and in an apolitical way to get to the truth of what happened on January 6th and leading up to it. And what we found, I agree with Adam, I mean, um, uh, Jordan was up to his neck in this plot for, for all, all we could see. He refused to provide us the information we needed, but uh, it looked from the contacts that we could identify that he was hev heavily involved in the plot to overturn the election, overturn the the Constitution. So I don't think uh, that's what America needs. And uh, certainly, uh, I take offense to the idea that I'm not patriotic. I work hard to defend the Constitution. So you can see that Jim's really in a tough position here, because as I've been saying, Jim Jordan is is not just a an obstructionist trying to protect Trump with all he's been doing. As I've been saying, he's been the, the, the most active person in the House when it comes to using their power to try and bully prosecutors, whether it's federal ones like Jack or even state-level ones like Fonnie Willis, Letitia James, uh, Alvin Bragg, basically anybody investigating Donald Trump, even if Jordan has no jurisdiction, he's been playing a role to try and stop it. But the fact is, he's doing it, at least in some cases, because he is facing prison alongside Trump. He hasn't been charged yet. He hasn't been indicted yet. But Jim Jordan is one of the coup plotters. As noted there, he's one of the coup people who is involved, at least according to some sources. I guess I should say allegedly. But according to some sources, he asked for a pardon. And what was noted there by Glenn Kirshner and others have been noting this as well, is that Jim Jordan shouldn't be up for speaker. He should be up for prison, right? And the fact is, is that the Trump endorsement might not even help because Jordan likely already had the MAGAs. He likely already did. The MAGA seem to be aligning behind him. I saw, you know, people like Lauren Boebert say very nice things about him, saying that she trusts him. And it seems like the Trump aligned people, it, given the choices they have, are already going to pick Jim Jordan. But what Jim Jordan needs to do is to get to, you know, the, the, the threshold. And he's not going to get Democrats to vote for him. He needs basically almost every Republican. And moderates are skeptical of Jim Jordan. And one of the reasons they're skeptical is that anything connected to Trump hurts them in their Biden leading districts. These Republicans that won where Trump lost do not want any taint of old Donnie's disgusting smell. But the reality is they've both been screwed here. Trump's been humiliated because he wanted to be speaker and they tricked him out of it. Basically, Jim doesn't want this because it hurts him to get to that threshold. And all it's done is increased the spotlight on Jim's criminality. It was just below the surface. But if he's speaker, it'll be impossible to ignore. Donald and Jimmy have ruined their lives forever tonight.